another small indoor harvest, but there's so much more going on in my indoor grill space. Come with me to Kim's Cozy Corner and see what's going on. Hello and welcome to Kim's Cozy Corner. We are back at it again. It's been a super busy week and I've gotten a lot done in this past week. I didn't video all of it. I videoed some of it, but not all of it. And so I wanna share with you today some of the things that I videoed this week, some of the things that have changed in my indoor grow space and how I have stuff not only in the basement, not only in the grow tent, but I have stuff upstairs in my family room as well. And we need to start some more seeds. So I'm gonna just jump right in because I don't want this video to be two hours long. I want to try to be as succinct as possible and get through this and show you everything that I've been working on. Now, I'm going on a business trip next week and I'm going to be away for an entire week. And when I'm away that long, I need to make sure that everything's tidied up in my indoor grill space so my mother doesn't have to do a whole bunch of um, taking care of the plants all she needs to do is just a little bit of watering and that's it. And we need to do some harvesting as well because I can't leave my mother without salad. So we're going to do some harvesting as well. So let me jump in. There's a lot going on, a lot going on. We will start by getting the seeds planted because I don't have many, but we can knock that out first. I got my seed journal here and uh, my seed starting planting schedule is what I should say here. And in my book, and if you're interested in this book, this book will be on Amazon and the link will be below to this book on Amazon. Um, this is my own personal design and I designed it for what makes sense for me and it might work for you. But in my book, in the very front of the book, I have my little list of everything that I'm growing this year. And on the list, it says I should have started basil on March 6th an eggplant on 315. And there are a few flowers that I haven't started yet. And based on this, I should be starting my flowers. Either I've already started them or I need to have them completely started and ready to go by April 1st, according to this book here. And so I'm going to share with you the couple of things we're going to start today. And then we are going to get to the other stuff. So we won't be starting many seeds today. The seeds that we will be starting today, and, and like I said, there aren't many. Let's start with the lettuce. So we will be starting a tango leaf lettuce. It's from Victory Seeds. Here's a picture of it here. And I didn't buy this seed. This was a free seed to me. So I'm really excited about giving it a try. It's a leaf lettuce. And honestly, it looked really good. So we will start a few of those seeds. I like to start lettuce seeds at least once every couple of weeks so I can keep that succession planning going. I don't want to run out of lettuce again. And the last time I ran out, I had to plant seeds directly into the soil and it took a long time to get it to where it needed to be so I can harvest it. So as long as I keep a couple of lettuce plants going every couple of weeks, I shouldn't have that problem again. The next one we're going to do is Pablo. Pablo, I've planted before, is a heading lettuce, but it is so pretty. It is so pretty. It's um, a heading lettuce and it's got some um, like reds around the outside edges of it really excited about getting some more Pablo and it's delicious. So that's it from a lettuce standpoint. Um, I'm also going to start one more herb and I've started all of the herbs um, that I plan to start from seeds now with the exception of two and that's basil and cilantro. Now I've had better luck with starting cilantro 
direct sowing them into my soil in my garden. So I won't be starting any cilantro. If you want to do that, you probably want to be doing that by now if you haven't already. Cilantro is more of a cool season crop. They don't like that hot weather. They will bolt on you and they'll get bitter quickly. So if you want to start transplants of cilantro, you're not going to see me do it. You need to get those started. But I am going to start basil. And so I'm going to do just a basic Italian Genovese basil this year. I grow enough basil, not only for me, but also for neighbors, family, and friends. And my daughter loves basil. So I want to make sure I have a large enough supply. So when she comes, visit, comes to visit me, I can give her all the basil she wants. So we're going to get the basil going. And we're going to start quite a bit of the basil. And then according to my book here, it says I need to start eggplant. Eggplant is... Um, I should start it on 315. Today is 316. So we are right on time for the eggplant. Now I'm going to start two different types of eggplants. I have some seeds for uh, from a seed share. So I don't know what variety of eggplant it is, but they're from a seed share. And we will be surprised once these germinate and they have fruit on them in the garden. And then I'm going to do a diamond eggplant. This is the diamond eggplant, which in my mind is kind of like the standard eggplant that you're used to seeing, but it's a little longer and slimmer than the big eggplants from back in the day. When it comes to eggplants, the only people in my family that eat eggplant is myself and my mother. My girls don't eat it. So I don't want to get those big, massive eggplants that we would end up wasting. Now, my family and friends and my neighbors who I'll be growing for this year, they said that they did like eggplant, just not too much. So we will go real easy on the eggplant this year. And then we're down to the seeds of our flowers. The flower seeds... Um, and this will be the last of the flower seeds for me. I planted a group of seeds. I think it's been a couple of weeks ago. Those were seeds that needed, you know, roughly, you know, eight to 12 weeks to germinate and get going. The seeds that I'm planting today are more like a four to six week uh, seed. In other words, you plant it and in about four to six weeks, you should be able to transplant it outside. So those are the seeds that we're going to do today. So one of the seeds we're going to do today is, is called Orange Flame Marigold. So all of my marigolds are today. So Orange Flame Marigold, and here's a picture of it. I think it gets about 12 inches tall. And so, and I, th that's what I'm looking for. These are the flowers that I'm putting in my garden. These are not just to be pretty, all right? This is not just for the prettiness. I need these flowers to work. And so these will be, all of the marigolds will be starting. And the marigolds that I want are the ones that stay short, closer to the ground, because they're going to be planted in between my vegetables in my raised bed gardens or in my green stock. So, but, but they have work to do. So the orange flame marigold, like I said, the picture was up there for you to see. And we're also going to do the um, Thumbelina zinnias. Thumbelina zinnias. These are a special kind of zinnia. I grew some zinnia last year that got every bit four feet tall. And luckily I grew them behind my trellis away from the vegetables so that they didn't get in the way. I'm not growing them this year. The only zinnias I'm gonna grow this year are those zinnias that stay short. And the Thumbelina zinnias only get up to 12 inches tall. So they are a shorter, shorter zinnia. And um, it's a mixture of colors. They're very pretty. Now getting back to the marigolds, um, I'm also going to do a lemon drop marigold. So these are going to be all yellow marigolds. These lemon drop marigolds, I believe, get 12 inches tall as well. Let me double check. Okay, 
Here it is. I finally found it. It's on the front of the pack. It says that they get anywhere from 6 inches to 12 inches tall. So a very short stature marigold. And they're all yellow versus the typical orange you see with marigold. So this will be yellow, lemon drop. I'm also doing the marigold happy harmony. This is from Harris Seed, so there's no picture. I'll put the picture right here. And this particular marigold only gets six to seven inches tall and they spread six to eight inches wide. So a nice short marigold is a happy harmony mix. So it's going to be multiple colors, but mostly if I remember, they're going to be mostly orange for the marigolds on the happy harmony. And then um, for the first time, I'm going to grow um, amaranth, if I even said it right. Um, amaranth is a beautiful plant, and I've seen it in many gardens um, on YouTube and in uh, families and friends and around the neighborhood. It's beautiful. The only thing I don't like about this is that it gets tall. Where did I read that it, it, it can get up to five feet tall. I don't need a five foot tall flower in my garden, but I'm not planting this for the beauty. I'm planting it as a trap for those unwanted insects. And so that's the real reason I'm planting it, even though it is a gorgeous plant, but I'm really planting it just because I want to um, have a place for those unwanted insects to go versus on my um, vegetables that I'm trying to eat. Um, it says that these stay upright. It's a deep red uh, flower. Um, and you can use it in, for cut flowers and fall arrangements and that kind of stuff. I won't be doing that. Um, it also says that the leaves are edible. I don't know if I'm going to eat them. I might taste them, but that might be about it. But that's what we'll be doing. And that's the last flower there. And that's all we're planting today. And so let's go ahead and get those planted so I can move and kind of show you all the things that I've been doing over this last week as I've been prepping to be away for a week. So for those who follow me know that I like to use a seed starting mix. You can use whatever works for you, but I use a Jiffy organic seed starting mix when I start all of my seedlings. You can make your own. You can buy other name brands. I don't want you to think you have to buy the Jiffy because you don't. But let's go ahead and get these in. When you're planting your seeds, I always talk about plant your seeds to whatever the pack tells you to do. And let's get these going. Oh, I need to update my book too. So let's go ahead and update my book. In this journal, not only does it have a place to, to talk about when you plan to start your seeds, when you actually did it and when you transplant them, but there's also a section in the book here that talks about fertilizing so you can keep track of when you fertilize your plants. And... In the very back, once we finally get into the garden, I can make notes about how all of my plants are doing in the main garden or the green stalks or wherever. And I can see if there's any kind of pest pressures. Did they germinate well? How tall did the plants really get in my garden for my zone? And um, I think there's a few um, pages in here where you can really like take your time and, and, and talk about each of your plants. And it's a really nice book on Amazon. So if you're interested, check it out on Amazon. But let me go ahead and mark these with today's date. 316 is when I'm starting these seeds. Oh, and the marigolds. Marigolds and zinnias. I can't forget them. All right. Now that the journal's updated, we can plant these seeds. So it looks like I'm starting with the tango leaf lettuce. Now I'm starting my 
seeds in very small cells because I am very limited on space in my grow tent. My grow tent is a five by five. Not only am I starting my seedlings in there, but I have two green stalks set up in there where I'm harvesting vegetables off that we're enjoying during the winter months. So I'm starting small and then I up pot into larger cells when it's time to up pot. But if you have larger cells, start in the size that you need so you don't have to do this up potting step. This is not a needed step if you have the space in your garden. So we will get the tango seeds started. Lettuce seeds are tiny. Let's see if I can put them where you can see them. You see how tiny those are, if you could even see them in my hand. And so I usually have a problem and I plant too many. So we are going to try to only put four little seeds to each cell. And lettuce seeds grow very quickly. Typically, lettuce is ready to harvest in about 30, between 30 and 50 days, depending on the varieties, whether it's a romaine or heading lettuce or leaf lettuce. So there's a few slight differences, but they germinate fast and they usually grow pretty fast. So I just gave them a light toss for the tango and now the tango is in. So let me get these all in and I will bring you back. You've seen me start seeds before. And if you haven't, there are a ton of videos out there of me starting seeds. Um, and I, I bring you along every time I'm starting something. I am in zone six, Southwest Ohio. My last frost date is they say the end of April. So the very last week in April. Um, sometimes they get it right, which is rare. And sometimes they get it wrong. And so I try to have things ready to go. Now, lettuce is a cool season crop. Lettuce can take a light frost if they are established in your garden. So I can start putting lettuce out in the garden about mid-April, if not a little early, if I want to chance it, right? Um, they don't do well with a super hard freeze, but a light frost typically will not hurt your lettuce plants. A very light frost will be fine. And at the same time, your lettuce don't want 90 degree heat either because they will bolt on you. They will go to seed they don't want that 90 degree super hot sun on them. So depending on the time of the year you're planting them, you might think about how you want to store them. Whereas now my basil seeds are about three years old. So I am going to plant those just a little thicker, just in case I have germination issues. But basil is usually very easy to grow. Basil is another one of those seeds that I can direct sow in my garden, even all the way up here in Ohio, and still get a very nice harvest. So I really don't have to do transplants when it comes to basil. But if you want to get an earlier harvest, why not? Let's get some transplants started. So I can start harvesting and um, drying the basil sooner rather than later, because that's one of those herbs that everybody really enjoys. Zinnia seeds are very different than typical vegetable seeds, if you can see that there. And for zinnia seeds, it says I need to plant them a quarter of an inch deep. So we will get those a quarter of an inch deep. Marigolds is also a very interesting seed. And I believe I need to plant them a quarter of an inch deep as well. That is correct. Right. Amaranth is one of those teeny tiny little bitty seeds. It's tiny. Wish me luck. And amaranth needs to be planted to 
quarter of an inch deep. I have a few terracotta pots. I might put the amaranth in there. That way it's not shading out my vegetables, which is what I'm most worried about. So maybe we'll do that. All right, so now moving over into the eggplants. For the eggplants, I need to plant these a quarter of an inch deep. I'm going to try to reduce just the sheer number <laughs> that I plant. I'm going to try. That's my goal. So I don't have too many, and I'm trying to figure out what to do with them. When you're starting your seeds, honestly, it's good to have damp soil already. Um, unfortunately, I've had this project sitting to the side ready to go for a few days, so my soil has dried out but we will get it all moist and ready to go here in just a second. So we can make sure these plants get a good start. All right, we have all the seeds in. I had to add just a little more soil to some of the cells to make sure that everything was covered. And now we need to get them watered in. Now I like to spray from the top when I start seeds. So that's the first step. We're gonna spray every cell from the top. Spraying the cells from the top, make sure that moisture gets to the seeds immediately. In addition to spraying from the top, we are gonna water from the bottom. Add water to this tray. I don't know, maybe a quarter of the way up because my soil is super dry. And we want these cells to soak in all of that water from the bottom. Now, after about 20 minutes, if there's still water in the tray, I need to pour that off. I don't want them sitting in water. So I put quite a bit in there. Actually, I probably put too much in there, um, but it's soaking it up. I can see the water level just going down and we're gonna let it follow this process until they're fully watered in and anything left will pour off. And so that's it from a seed starting standpoint. I'm gonna find a place over in the grow tent for it and I'm gonna bring you with me because we're gonna harvest while we're in there. Okay, so we're inside the grow tent. I have the plants right here. We're gonna lower this light till it gets a little closer on this end. And this is where they're going to sit until they germinate and they get ready to go. And once they start growing, then we'll transplant them and pot them up and do all of those great things. But for now, this will be their home until they're ready for the next step. So let me show you what's going on and all the changes and let's harvest some stuff while we're in here. Now, I planted my little tomato, all 60 varieties of them, about a week ago. And I have almost 100% germination. And actually it was about four or five days in when I start seeing them pop their little heads up. So the tomatoes are definitely coming to the party this year. And I have some lettuces up here and some greens and other things. On this level, I've up potted quite a bit of my lettuce so they can continue to grow until I'm ready to put them in the garden or the green stalk or wherever. These are all of my peppers. I had 35 varieties. And of the 35 varieties, I initially reported that all germinated except for one. But guess what, y'all? That one germinated too. So I had 100% germination of all of the different brands or varieties of peppers. Up here, more lettuce and kale. And this one up here. These are Brussels sprouts in that one. All the way in the back, back there, those are more peppers. So there's a lot of peppers, y'all. 35 varieties, but probably 300 plants. <laughs> and so I've up potted most of the peppers now, most of them. There's probably a handful still that need to get up potted over here. My flowers are in here as well. They have germinated, most of them. Some of my flower seeds were very old and they didn't germinate, but I think we'll be able to get some flowers. My gazinias, which is right there. I only had one or two germinate in there. 
all the way down here at the bottom. Look how pretty that lettuce is back there. Look at that. Isn't that gorgeous? But there's lettuce down here, kale, collards, herbs, celery, and more peppers. And then right here, these are the rest of my tomatoes that have germinated and they're looking good. And I'm probably going to start up potting those in about two weeks. But y'all, the green stalks is where we're getting ready to spend some time. So in this green stalk planter that I have here, we are going to harvest lettuce and lots and lots of lettuce. So we will harvest, let's see, what is this? This is a Gustav. We're going to harvest one of these. Might be two of these. Let's see. Nope, just one. Nice little small head of Gustav. Oh, it smells good. Let's take that little leaf. There we go. Left plenty in the pocket there. I'm going to harvest this little gem. Just a few leaves right there. All right. I can't harvest everything. There's just too much in here. Let's see what we can get just to kind of make room for the other plants. Let's think about it that way. Some of the leaves of this goose stuff. Let's take this one too. And this one. That leaves rooms for those to grow. Some of these, like this Lala Rosa, I've harvested off of it several times now. And so it's about done. When I come back from my trip, I'm probably going to need to pull this out and replace it with something else. I'm going to take all of this as well. Oh, this is butter crunch. I'm almost back around. I have carrots growing in this pocket here. It might be hard to see, but there are a few carrots in there. I have some Cimarron red lettuce up here that I'm not going to harvest. I just planted that in there or transplanted it up. I'm going to take all of the bib. That's what this is right here is bib. And this ruby red is pretty much done as well. This is ruby red. It doesn't even have a red, much red color to it anymore, but we'll take all of that. And I think that's it for the lettuce. But you got to see kind of what's going on in this green stalk. Now, let's look over behind me here. Behind me here, I have a red pepper a red pepper growing indoors in my indoor growth space. I believe this is a giant Marconi, I think is what this is. So I'm gonna pick that one. And I'm really not trying to pick peppers, but if it's red, we're gonna pick it so my mom can enjoy it in her salads while I am away on my business trip. Here's a little bell pepper. It's gonna be either yellow or orange. It looks more orange, but we're not picking that one today. All right, we're all the way up to the top here. And I have some tiny Tims and some orange hats that we're picking. Some of these I almost waited too long on. Now, don't get me wrong, I have been enjoying a snack or two along the way. So it's not like they've been sitting here just all going bad. There are tons of yellow flowers on here. So I think they're getting ready to put on a whole nother blushing of tomatoes. I have quite a few blooms on the peppers as well, but let's go grab that last pepper and let's go harvest stuff from my hydroponic system as well. The last pepper right here. Now it's time for us to, oh, I got one more thing to show you down here in the basement. 
I need to show you my potatoes. I'll show you the potatoes. Then we will move upstairs and show you everything that's going on upstairs as well. One of the things that I do in my garden is use every available space. And y'all, my seed potatoes came in and I am putting them in the hallway of the basement just so that I have a place to put them. Now, when my seed potatoes came in, some of them came in really large and I cut them so that I can have more seed potatoes. And um, we need to let this harden over, right? So anytime you cut your seed potato, you need to let that skin scab over before you put it in the ground. So let me show you everything that I have. So I have it sitting out anywhere and everywhere I can put it. I have my purple Vikings and my Lehigh up there, down here. I have my red potatoes. So my Pontiacs and Sangaree or Sangaree. And then anywhere I can put it here, are more seed potatoes all over here. Now I talked about letting these scab over. If I was to put this in the ground, still wet, fresh from cutting it in half, it could um, mold and it could rot and then you've wasted a perfectly good seed potato. So we will let these start chitting. Now you don't have to chit your potatoes. I like to chit my potatoes. When I say chit your potatoes, that means let the little eyes sprout. Let them actually get the little root systems coming off, but they'll start coming up. That's what I mean by when I say I'm chitting my potatoes. Chitting your potatoes will just give them a faster start in your garden. Now your potatoes um, can go out before your last frost. Your potatoes are underneath the soil, so they are protected if you were to have a frost. And so I'm putting my potatoes out about three or four weeks before my last frost. So in the next two weeks or so, I will be putting these out in my garden and I will bring you with me. So first week of April, be looking for a video on potatoes. I am now over by the hydroponic system and I just wanna show you something, y'all. Look at these cucumbers, look at them. Look how big they're getting. See if I can get to the one in the back so you can see it. Look how big that cucumber is. Now, we're not ready to harvest, but my mother may be enjoying cucumbers while I'm away. This plant right here is the one we're getting ready to harvest off of, if there's any left. My family's been enjoying tomatoes off of this plant for about a week now, and I'm like, save them, I wanna make a video. So I'm lucky if I have any left on here. It looks like there's plenty. So we're going to harvest those now. All right, let's just start harvesting. These taste so good too. You would never believe that these were grown inside versus outside. They are quite delicious. Now these are Tiny Tim's. Some of these are huge. Look at how big that is. It's perfect for a snack. Look at that. Beautiful, beautiful. Now I cut the top out of this plant. Ooh, well, it's been a couple of weeks ago now. And now I have all of these side shoots starting to produce um, new leaves and and it's getting fuller and that's what we wanted on this plant. And this is my orange hat. It came to the party late, but there are tomatoes on there now. So we're very happy about that. Look at that harvest. Look at that. We got some peppers. We got some tomatoes in there. Plus this big bowl of lettuce right here. So we have harvested plenty of food for my mom to enjoy while I'm away over the next week. But there's still one more area I need to show you because there is a ton of stuff upstairs. If you think my grow tent's full, you haven't seen anything yet. So I have been hardening off quite a few of my vegetables and we had some pretty bad storms over the last few days. So I brought everything indoors 
So you're going to see everything that I have upstairs that I've been hardening off outside. So let me show you. Those are all my onions and all of my brassicas mostly. That's what's up here. So there's broccoli, kohlrabi, cauliflower, um, cabbage. All of those are the things up here with many different uh, Korean cabbage, Napa cabbage. Um, what did I forget? I think that's everything that's up here and all of the different onion. I even have a tray over here. I had to put them wherever I could. I have more onion over here and I've started hardening off some lettuce. Now hardening off the lettuce is very important because this lettuce that I got out of our indoor grow space, out of that green stalk, that green stalk's gonna be going outside in the, very, in, the, in the very near future. We're just a few weeks away from that. And in order to move that outside, I'm gonna to have to harden off everything that's in it or I'm gonna to have to replace what's in it. So having some lettuce ready to go outside in the next couple of weeks is going to be important for us not to miss out on harvesting lettuce along the way. Remember, we don't want to run out of lettuce ever again. Same thing for the tomatoes. I am going to enjoy these tomatoes, um, but the ones in the green stalk, we're going to have to harden those off so we can take those outside. But the hydroponic system will be able to continue to go strong while we're waiting to get tomatoes from the outside garden. I hope you enjoyed this video with a little harvest, a little planting of seeds, and then of course my little shenanigans just talking the whole time. I enjoy sharing these things with you. And if you're enjoying it, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. I'm gonna keep these types of videos coming as long as you want to see them. So until next time, and I hope there will be a next time that you come back to Kim's Cozy Corner and hang out with me. Bye.